one of the, I told you, earth-shattering papers that came up in the field of critical care medicine, the multi-center randomized control trial, which basically evaluated Amato's concept of low tidal volume ventilation in a big number, close to 861 patients, and they showed that there was a very good reduction in absolute risk uh, which is mortality. Not only that, that we were able to uh, ventilate people more safely. We were able to pull them off the ventilator more sooner. They had lesser days on ventilator. Everything was good, you know, in, in nutshell. Everything was good when you use a tidal volume of 6 ml per kg. When you tried not to exceed a plateau pressure of uh, 30 centimeters water and when you were using the optimal P. Okay, so have that registered. <clears throat> Again, this is one slide I would like you to concentrate. I'm not able to use my cursor. Please look into the right side. Okay, so that's where uh, that basically shows you the protocol that was used in this ArgeNet trial. Everybody was given an assist volume control. Everybody was ventilated using 6 ml per kg body weight. With 6 ml per kg body weight, if the plateau pressure was going above 30, they would try reducing the tidal volume a little lower. Obviously, when you keep reducing the tidal volume lower, what happens? Your minute ventilation goes down. So the PCO2 builds up, the pH drops down, you develop a situation of respiratory acidosis. But it is still not too harmful as long as the pH is above 7.20, it is okay. So they would like to, they, were, they tried adjusting the respiratory rate. They could go up on the respiratory rate to up to 35 to try and keep the pH around 7.30 or more. Okay. And look at the IE ratios that they have employed anywhere between 1 is to 1 to 1 is to 3. Okay. So 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 3 is where you need longer expiratory times. If you think there is a problem with auto peep, you think there is a problem with air stacking. Okay. You, you, you think there is uh, not enough time for the inspired air to come out. All these you can make out on the ventilator. If it's possible, we should try and have a separate session on graphics. We'll see if that is possible. Okay, then is when you prolong the expiratory time. But remember, every time you prolong the expiratory time, you are going to be compromising the inspiratory time. That is when oxygenation is going to happen. And I told you already, if you reduce, the more you reduce the inspiratory time, your mean airway pressure will also come down. Therefore, your oxygenation, the driving force for the oxygenation also is going to come down. So you need to keep these things in mind. And the lowest that you can go on an inverse, on a IE ratio is 1 is to 1. Don't try to make the inspiratory ratio, inspiratory time more than the expiratory time that's going to harm your lung. Okay, and uh, the target over there was a PaO2 of anywhere above 55 uh, millimeters mercury and SpO2. It's enough to have a person oxygenating or saturating 88 percent or more, actually. Okay, and that's for beginners, of course. Experts may choose their own targets depending on the given situation. Okay, we have also had to ventilate patients accepting SpO2s of 85, 86, you know, that's going to be decided. And I've given you two of the commonly used formulas for uh, predicted body weight. All that is available on the web. You don't have to worry about. So that is about tidal volume and plateau pressure.